Welcome back. In the last episode, I left off in the beginning of my instructional path. You know, this is where things get pretty good. At the age of 12, alone with my parents going through, you know, a divorce, no friends, and really only having my sister and a guitar, things got got really tough and lonely. I was angry with everyone and everything. Nothing really made sense to me. You know, I, I was I was lost and not to mention, you know, I was also going through puberty at this time. But luckily, I had a guitar. You know, the one thing I loved and obviously I, I absolutely still love is music. With all the time you know, with me being alone at home, you know, I spent every day trying to learn how to play the guitar. With the current feelings I had at this time, I was drawn, you know, to more of the the angry, frustrated music like punk rock, rock and roll, and metal. You know, because I was angry, pissed off, sad, lonely, and this uh, this genre of music is, is what really resonated with me and kind of gave me a little bit of the sense that I wasn't alone. But eventually, you know, music and playing guitar, like I said, it was everything to me. I I really focused in on being able to learn how to read guitar tabs. And from there, I was was slowly but surely on my way to playing my favorite ACDC Metallica, you know, Sum 41, Pantera, uh, Scorpions, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, all that good stuff. Um, you know, so, so yeah, but playing guitar also allowed me to really escape the constant arguing and fighting my parents were going through on pretty much a daily basis. You know, I would, I would, I would get home from school or finish up what I was doing and I would plug in my guitar and, uh, throw in a, uh, an ACDC CD and uh, crank my amp up as loud as I could and, and pretend I was Angus Young, you know, I was jumping off my bed and rolling around on the ground and, uh, you know, playing along to Hell's Bells. It was quite a turn in direction from from my, my childhood childhood. But, uh, you know, at this point, it kind of takes me into, into eighth grade. And here I had a big transition where my parents put me into a public school. They tried to put me into really what they thought was the best public school in the county. You know, it was in a wealthier neighborhood. It was by the beach and it just seemed it seemed great. But honestly, the transition from a private Christian school to a home school and then to a public school, it was it was pretty overwhelming. Really I only knew one person, you know, she was a girl. And uh, just knowing one person that's a girl when you're a guy going into my last year of middle school in eighth grade, um, it was it was it was kind of scary, you know. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, I remember though she uh, she had a party at her house, and boys and girls were invited. This was kind of like my first boy girl party, if you'll say, Um, you know. And uh, I was a little. a little scared, you know, had some anxiety about, about that to be at my first boy girl party. What would happen, you know, watching movies and stuff growing up, seeing what went down. Um, and again, like I'd never been to like really anything besides a birthday party or anything like that at this point. Um, so I'm there and you know, kids start showing up and all this stuff and there's a pool in the backyard and next thing you know it, you know, I'm seeing kids drinking beer i was like whoa you know in eighth grade i was like 13 14 or something like that somewhere around there 13 12 13 years old um and to see kids drinking beer it was uh it was shocking you know um and then i also remember they had they had a helium tank they they were blowing up balloons and kids were stuck stuck on the helium i was like "What? What 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 the hell is going on this is this is crazy Um, you know, I really didn't understand why they were doing this, you know, um, and it was funny. I remember asking one kid, you know, why he was drinking. Uh, I asked him, you know, are you angry with your parents? You know, are you upset in life? Like I was trying to understand like why he wanted to, uh, you know, drink beer and act crazy and, uh, out of control, you know? And like I said, from what I was used to, 
this was this was pretty overwhelming you know but one thing i should mention uh, before i go further is that my dad in the 80s was a heavy addict um you know he shared with me some of the experiences as i was younger uh, of his party years in the 80s but it was more so always in a negative context and more so to instill fear the drugs and alcohol only led to death and destruction and hell. And, you know, I, I don't hold this against him. I know that he was just, you know, obviously as a parent now, you know, you're worried about what your kids are going to do. So you try to be able to do what you feel is the best way to keep them away from those things. You know, so pretty much I was being told, you know, my whole life, and my whole upbringing that, uh, that, um, you know, if, if I got into this, then... You know, I was, uh, you know, only led to a path of death and destruction and hell. So, you know, it was, uh, it was a little shocking. But uh, anyways, you know, um, at this point, I wanted to fit in, though. You know, I, I had a longing to have friends, to be liked, and saw this as a possible opportunity for me to be a normal, happy kid. Plus, you know, I was scared going to a new school. I had insecurities of being judged, you know, no one wanting to be my friend or possibly not even allowed to be. Um, but quickly, I realized most of these kids, you know, they had dysfunctional families or situations, you know, that were similar to mine or worse. Once school started, though, you know, I was on a mission to find some kids I could play music with. Since I, you know, at this point, I believed... I was somewhat good at playing guitar. I saw this as my way to make some friends and, you know, possibly be cool. Soon, I met one of my best friends, um, you know, of my teen years. He played drums and loved the same music I did. We hung out pretty much every day. We jammed and we surfed and, you know, just hung out basically until my parents got off work and either my mom or my dad picked me up, you know, and, uh, but soon after that, we, uh, we created a band, and uh, I was kind of considered, you know, popular in the popular clique. And uh, eventually, we played. We started playing house parties, and soon we were playing at every house party, and, you know, everyone really loved us. Uh, we were playing mainly covers to start off, and then we started writing some original music, and eventually went into a studio and recorded, and uh, it was awesome, you know. But with all that and playing these parties and... You know, I explained how the first party was in eighth grade at this time. At this point, you know, we were starting to get into high school, um, you know, freshman year and sophomore year. Um, you know, the parties got, got crazier. You know, eventually this lifestyle, you know, it's what led me into drugs and alcohol. You know, going to school with in a, in a wealthy neighborhood, it, it didn't necessarily mean a good, wholesome education. You know, in fact, it was quite the opposite. You know, lots of the parents were never around either working or traveling. Lots of them just leaving their kids home alone. It was crazy. The other fact, you know, was that they had lots of money, you know, and when it came to throwing parties, there was no lacks of funds. Uh, you know, there was tons of booze and tons of drugs. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was crazy. Granted, you know, I didn't have money or a house, you know, to throw these parties, but I was in a band that everyone loved, so, you know, I was given all the perks of that wealthy lifestyle. However, you know, as I grew playing guitar and got better and better, you know, our game, or, and our band got better and better, we started gaining more and more popularity, and we started, you know, playing actual real venues. Um, I remember we actually played uh, a venue that's no longer around that was really, really popular uh, here in Southern San Diego called Canes, you know, back in the nineties, if you remember that early two thousands, um, that was a really popular place and, uh, was a big place that, you know, I wanted to be able to play at, um, and playing these places and stuff like that, we found out, you know, we could make money. Um, and you know, I was like, Oh wow. Like I can make like a hundred or $200, like playing a show. This is awesome. Um, so, you know, I was like, man, maybe I, I can do this as like a job and like as a career and, you know, that whole rock star lifestyle mentality started setting in. Um, and, uh, you know, the problem was though, that, uh, in order to keep up with this lifestyle and keep up with the progress of our band, like music equipment costs a lot of money, you know, um, uh, especially when you are 
in a band with kids that parents can buy them pretty much whatever equipment they wanted. Um, it was tough, you know, so I had to figure out how I was going to get, you know, a Gibson guitar and a Marshall half stack and all the pedals that I wanted and all that kind of stuff, you know, Gibson Les Paul is like $2,000 and, you know, a Marshall half stack is like anywhere between two to $3,000 is crazy. And then not even including pedals, it's like, what, you know, at 13, 14, 15 years old, you, you don't have that kind of money, you know, typically, um, you know, and I didn't want to lose my, you know, spot in the band because I couldn't get the equipment that I needed to play at these, you know, venues and stuff. Um, so I started thinking about how we can make more money and get more people from our school and different people to come to our shows and all that stuff. So ended up, you know, setting up a night with a party bus, a ticket to the part, uh, the show, and then an after party. Um, and eventually we ended up bringing in like two to five thousand dollars, two to five thousand dollars at the peak of, um, you know, the band, uh, per show. It was, uh, it was pretty awesome, you know? Um, so yeah. And I would make, you know, a decent, you know, piece of that pie. Um, so at this point I was making good money, to be able to support the things that I wanted to buy that my parents couldn't buy me, you know, but at the same time with more and more of this, you know, it was just more and more submerged into sex, drugs and rock and roll lifestyle. You know, at the age of 16, all I pretty much cared about was getting a bottle of Jack, uh, you know, a pack of cigarettes and whatever drugs were available, be it weed, Coke, Molly, mushroom, acid, you know, meth, pills, whatever. Uh, luckily, I wasn't so much into heroin and uh, I'll get into that a little bit in a little bit later. But, you know, as I got deeper into this lifestyle, so did my addictions. And, uh, you know, before I knew it, I was a flow, full blown drug addict. Yeah, that's what happened. And, uh, you know, after my senior year of high school, the band broke up because most of these kids went off to college. You know, their parents had money. They sent them off to college. And uh, so that really fucked with me. You know, I started getting all the old senses and feelings of being alone. It was tough. You know, without a band, all I cared about now was pretty much continuing to make money, drugs, and girls. And, you know, I saw that the kids that I was partying with and stuff seemed to have an infinite amount of money. And, um, you know, I didn't have a band to be able to make money with shows anymore and uh you know so i was just going to parties and i saw the opportunity of being able to supply these parties with all the party favors that they wanted and uh you know be able to make money that way and um so you know this lifestyle it lasted for about six years and uh all until a really 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 uh tough event one of you know probably the toughest event um, an experience in my life up to this point, um, that I went through, uh, you know, and it really showed me that I was at my rock bottom and, uh, gave me one last chance to, to change, uh, my life before I ended up in jail or dead. So I'm going to stop here though, because this video is getting a bit longer than, you know, I was expecting, uh, but we'll pick it up in the next video. You know, I really appreciate your time and you listening to my story. If any of this resonates with you, please subscribe, leave a comment, and, uh, and I'll definitely be responding back to anyone that leaves a comment. And, uh, you know, other than that, send you lots of love and light and hope you have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.